morning, everybody. <clears throat> Here, let's get let's get this. Yeah, there it goes. Ah, yeah. So I just filmed like doing some 17 hertz in here. And uh, yeah, I forgot to hit the button for film. And then when I was done, I hit the button. So it started recording at the, yeah. Anyway, yeah, it didn't work out. But I'm still trying to get these things broken pretty good. I think they're pretty good to go. I've been turning it up a little bit, so actually today's the first day that I turned up to normal demo volume. It's doing pretty good. Um, but I had somebody ask me a question about um, the voltage input of an amplifier. You know, they're like, well, my amplifier says that it does from 0.5, which is half volt, to eight volt on the gain, and they're like, should I try to get closer to that eight volt? Let me say no, no. Um, the reason being is I'm getting killer power out of these amplifiers here, the DS18 Hooligan, Hooligan KOs, and um, like, I'm getting awesome power out of them. And my RCAs are at like 1.8, 1.9 volt because I had them sit there for the tar amps. I never changed it, guys. I never changed my head unit settings. You know, a gain knob on an amplifier is for nothing more than to match up to your head unit output voltage. That's pretty much all it's for. Um, now, back in the day when Class D like first came out, you know, in like the 90s, yeah, back then people were, uh, you know, trying to put a line driver on them, think, you know, hoping to get more power. And they might have back then. But I believe, you know, in like, you know, a good 20 years that they got that circuitry like pretty much on point. Uh, so I know it made a difference like on class A, B amplifiers and maybe early class D. But, man, if you got an amp that's only a few years old, I wouldn't even think that... Uh, that input voltage is going to mean a whole lot. I mean, look at tar amps, you know, the MD and HD series, maybe the base, they didn't really care a whole lot for anything over uh, 1.9 or 2 volts. They just didn't. And I think that they have really, all amp companies were like, hey, uh, you know, these guys are, they're putting like eight amplifiers on their subwoofers, so maybe we should just make this input voltage thing work better. I think that's what happened. Um, so I don't see no reason to, you know, try to get a line driver in there. Uh, most head units now do a good solid uh, two, three, four, five volts. I don't see no need for it. Or I'm, I'm not into it. I mean... I actually saw uh, Derek, I believe, from Sundown. He did a test where he set his RCA voltage like on his head unit. And everybody thought that splitting that signal from the RCAs would make it drop. And he kind of proved that it didn't. He had a bunch of different amplifiers hooked up and working. And he had a set of RCAs that were coming out of all the Ys. And he tested it. And it was still what the head unit was putting out. So I don't know, guys. Uh all I know is I don't run high RCA voltage. You know, I'm not here trying to get like six volts out of my head unit. I, I've done great just being set at like 1.9. And like I said, I set it there because that that's what everybody said that the old tar amps recommended. And I had four of the MD8Ks in here. So I did go through and set my head unit up and... You know, I wasn't trying to push it to, I think it's a, it's an Exelon, so it's five volt output. I didn't try to turn everything up to get nowhere near that. I just, like I said, tar amps, 1.9. And uh, I set it there. And then when I went to these Korean DS-18 amps, 
Now, I know that they would like a little more. I think they the, the game knob says, you know, like something up to six votes. So it's like, okay, I could probably cram six vote in there, but why? The game knob is to literally sync the amplifier to, or, you know, match the amplifier's input to what the, the head unit's output is. So, yeah, I just... You know, I set the games where the head unit already was, and they're doing great, guys. I don't see no need for it. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe one of you guys know a lot more about this than I do, and you can shed some light on the subject. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be leaving power on the table. Doubt it very seriously, you know. Considering what I clamped out, out of these amps, but um, yeah, I very seriously doubt it. Would it sound better if I turned it up? Hell, I don't know. Would it be cleaner? I don't know. All I know is I set everything clean where my head unit voltage was at. So that's that's that pretty much. We got somebody pulling over here in a UPS truck. I know he ain't delivering me a package over here. <laughs> I'm, I'm just on the side of the road at one of my little spots I film at, play music at. And there is a UPS, like, hub facility down the road there. Yeah, he's just pulled over checking something. Now, something else we can talk about is uh, I did shoot a video. I'll be releasing it soon. It's just unboxing a McLaren mid. Um... I'm, I'm going to change four of my mids in here. I have the McLaren Neodymiums. I love them. They're loud as hell on low power. Guys, they, they are stupid loud. Um, I could actually turn them up quite a bit. I don't need to because they're, they're plenty. But the one thing is the McLaren Neodymium mids being as good as they are. One, they're shallow. They're only like that deep which is awesome for whatever you want to mount them in. I mean, you got options. You can mount them bad boys damn near anywhere. Uh, but, oh, they're lightweight as hell too. They don't weigh hardly nothing because there's just, rather than having a ton of magnet back there, they're super efficient with a piece of neodymium. Great. Another reason I love McLaren, Mc, they got recones or diaphragms for everything they sell. But, Back to these Neos, and they got the, the bullet, you know, the aluminum bullet in the center. But they don't play mid-bass very well. Mids, they cover great, and uh, they are strictly a mid-range speaker. Now, when I'm rolling around and I had the bass on a little bit, if I'm just wanting to cruise and listen to music, you know, not, not to sub beating like, you know, just cruise. They're great. No, they're not. They're missing mid-bass, guys. I had to turn the sub on a little bit to kind of balance it out. So I'm thinking, what the hell can I do? Put two mid-bass in the door with two of the Neos. Obvious. I looked, and it's some eights, you know, and I'm like, uh, these Romeos, uh, cost-efficient. They're cheap. You know, they're not going to break the bank. They're like half the price the Neo was. Oh my God, these things weigh like 20 pounds a piece. <laughs> Literally, they, the, the, the damn motor on the back of it's like a six and a half. <clears throat> I mean, they got booty for days and they are heavy. And rather than the aluminum bullet in the center, you know, they have uh, just the dust covered. It says McLaren. So it's got to look a little wonky in here, but I don't care. I just wanted to add a little more mid bass in here for when uh, I'm just driving and don't want to blast the subwoofers, you know. So I got a nice unboxing video on that. And got, I'm telling you for, they're under 60 bucks a piece, obviously, you know, like now when you buy most mids, they don't come as a pair, you know, you buy individually. Um, but yeah, I could not believe, I mean, when I got the box of four of them and I tried to pick it up off the porch, I'm just like, holy crap, this is heavy. But yeah, I was totally shocked at how big these are, but when you see the video, that is what I'm doing. I'm going to put two of them in each door. 
with two of the neodymiums and the way I believe the McLaren Neos crossover, like their, their frequency range starts like a little above 100 Hertz and the Romeo start at 65. So that'd be a really good balance there of mid bass and mid range. But no, this video is getting too long guys. I got to jump off of here, man. I got to go to work and I am, I'm booked with appointments pretty much all day long. So peace out guys. And as always, bass on.